Alright guys, what's up? This is Q&A number 3 for episode 3 of Top Chef Canada and put once again, I'm going to do a couple questions, answer a bunch of them and give away another free 6 pack chef cut above tea. So start off with Facebook, let's get this baby going. Uh, Donna Ng asks, what has been your biggest fear going into Top Chef other than not winning? Uh, and have you overcome that fear or are you still working on it? My biggest fear going into Top Chef is, yeah, it's for sure not winning, but it's also dis displaying something that's not me, not being genuine, um, and also just not embarrassing myself, but not being able to showcase who I truly am as a person, as a chef. Um, that's sort of my biggest fear, that and then not winning. And then have you overcome that fear or are you still working on it? I'm absolutely still working on it. Um, and what I've what I've come to figure out is more of just my goal going in was to be myself and let the chips fall where they may. I can't control certain things, and what I can control, those are the things I want to just focus on and make sure I do well. Which is my dishes, you know, which is how I present myself, how I how I treat all the other chefs and everybody around me. Um, so yeah, so great question. Thanks, Donna. Jordy. I haven't seen, I haven't heard from you in forever. Jordi Jambalaya, I used to work with her at Momofuku, she's a champ. Um, how did you maintain focus and composure when you're in such a high stress environment? Were you able to stick to any of your usual routines, example working out? How do I maintain focus and composure? It's, it's hard to say, but it's what we do, right? It's our craft, it's, um, it's what we do on a daily basis, and it's what we're good at. And I guess it's like being an athlete or being a competitor, um, whether it was basketball or bodybuilding, etc., or football, being able to focus and keep composure is what makes someone a good a good athlete or a good chef or a good at whatever they're doing, and differentiating that from being great. Um, Kobe Bryant was was a big like you know advocate of that. It's like he loves he loves the pressure. He loves having the ball when they're down um, and you win a game because that's when he excels the most. Same as Michael Jordan, all these greats. Um, so yeah, so for me, how do I I maintain it? Is I just think of those guys and just remember to myself that I can only control what I can control and as long as you're confident in yourself, then you'll maintain that focus and composure. Um, in regards to being able to stick to my usual routines, yep, I tried as much as I can. So um, this is obviously when we're not shooting, uh, I still woke up early every day, um, whatever, it doesn't matter what time we had to go shoot, I'd wake up whatever hours before that to go hit the gym, you know, um, get my vitamins in, my sups, um, eating when we're, when we're shooting and stuff, I choose to, although I didn't have a scale or plus we're moving around, I can't always eat how I used to eat, but making sure I'm choosing the right, right foods, eating things that's going to fuel me versus, you know, eating that fried chicken when I could really have that, you know, maybe that braised chicken instead. So I did stick to it the best that I can. It's sort of become this thing where it's now, um, it's a lifestyle, so yep. Thanks for the question, Jordy. Uh, Sandy asks, Sandy Anderson asks, which ingredient intimidates you the most? Um, I think the ingredient that intimidates me the most would have to be probably large primal cuts of meat. Um, that means butchery uh, in regards to those kind of sizes, just because I'm not used to it. I don't do it often, my family doesn't eat meat often. Um, at the restaurants that I work at, there's always someone else doing it or um, they don't get the meat as a big primal cut. Um, so yeah, so like if that comes up as a challenge or something, that's definitely something that I'd be like, oof. But if you give me like seafood, fish, etc., that I can do no problem. Um, but yeah, it's just things I'm not familiar with. Uh, she also then asked, what's the simplest but toughest ingredient that you've ever worked with and why? The simplest ingredient that I've ever worked with is probably an egg. And the toughest ingredient that I've probably ever worked with is an egg. And the reason for that is because different the egg is such a crazy ingredient in regards to the yolk and the whites cook at different temperatures. So you have different textures, you can manipulate it differently, and you can use them for different things. Eggs, the, the whites you can use it in savory and sweet, meringues, um, yolks you use it for custards, you can use it for dressings. So it's so versatile that it makes it very, very tough to be able to like sometimes manage it, but it also makes it super simple because you, an egg you can make a bunch of things. 
next one, Paul Brian Cas Paul Brian Castudio Nino. Hey chef, my question is, how do you balance being top chef and being a bodybuilder? And also, what keeps you motivated? Um, let's start with the balance part of being being a top chef. It's something that I've learned to just take and just go with it. Um, Six Pack Chef came to be because I was working in restaurants and I started getting into competing. Before that, I was very much into fitness, um, more so because of basketball and also because I wanted to lose weight, um, being being obese as a child. Um, so as I got more and more into competing and learning about nutrition and dieting and training, more and more I, I got to learn how to um, eat properly, get my meals in, timing, etc. And then being a chef, um, I also learned to then be able to figure out how to cook my meals way better um, with, you know, less, less um, bad ingredients, you know. How can I cook something that's super tasty without using so much fat or butter or cream um, or sugar? So that's how to make ball and balancing it is really just making time. That's really all it is. If it's that important to you, um, if you really want to do it, then you do it. Like as a chef for me, when I was working in restaurants, when it's my days off or when I finished work on you know a Saturday night, I didn't go out to the bars or I didn't go to clubs or anything like that. I went home because I wanted the next day to be able to go and hit the gym. And even going go, going to work um, every day, I would still go to the gym before I hit. I made it a routine. It was sort of like, for me, brushing my teeth. Uh, if I didn't do it, it didn't feel right. So as it's just getting into that routine, making it part of your life. And then once you're doing that, it's so hard to not have it in there that you gotta do it. And that's how you balance it. And when it comes to being motivated, a lot of things motivate me. Um, but I guess a lot of a big thing that motivates me also is um, the support system. Obviously, everybody that you know, whether it's liking my photos or saying thanks that you're doing, you're doing amazing, um, that's motivating me because I don't want to let people down. So many people are watching me. Um, another thing that motivates me is the fact that I'm alive. Right? Um, me having cancer was a big thing. It was like, wake up, Wallace. If you're not going to be able to use your life, I'm going to take it away from you. Sort of like that's what a message God was saying to me, kind of thing. And yeah, so like, boom, pump it out and just try to live life till its fullest and just sort of YOLO and like if you have an opportunity, go take it. You know, if, you, if you're if you gonna go do something, make it happen because you've only got one life. That's, that's really a big motivation. It's that you've only got one life. You literally can die tomorrow. For all I know, I can die five minutes after making this, right? And so that's the motivation that I need. So thanks for the question, Paul. That was Facebook. Now let's get into Instagram. By the way, Instagram w 26 by chef follow me. Um, and this is always going to obviously, if you're watching this, it's going to be on my YouTube, Six Pack Chef. Okay, let's see, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Mini Lifts asks, do you find it awkward or does it affect your relationship with your team members knowing you're in direct competition with one another? Like, was it hard for you to form friendships with them? Um, I'm a pretty... I'm a very introvert but extrovert at the same time. If I really based, I'm very much more so based on people's energy or their connection. So like if someone's open to me, I, I try to, I'm much more comfortable and starts opening up to them as well. Um, but in regards to the relationship with the team members, um, at the end of the day, restaurant wars, we all want to win. So when we're together as a team, we're working as a team and we all want to put out an amazing dish, an amazing uh, a menu, so because we all want to win, we just don't want to go home. When it comes to individual challenges or stuff like that, we all want to win. Like we all want to be the best. It's a competition. Everybody on this show is extremely talented, and if we didn't want to win, if we didn't want to be competitive, then we wouldn't be here. So, does it? It gets a little awkward. It does sometimes because at the end of the day. Um, it's a competition and sometimes people will do whatever they want to, whatever they can do or whatever they need to do to win. Um, it's not, nothing against anybody or anybody or myself or whoever, that's just part of the game. Uh, so thanks for the questions, Mini Lift. Um, Strand Strong, what a big guy. Um, what has been your biggest challenge so far? The biggest challenge so far for me is being able to dial it into a point where my dish is the best. I haven't won a challenge yet. 
Um, we're three episodes in. I haven't won a quick fire. I haven't won an elimination challenge. I'm at. The, I'm. I'm pretty. I'm pretty at the top of the pack with, uh, you know, Paul, with, um, with Phil, Dennis, all these guys. Like we're pretty. I've, I haven't been on the bottom yet, and but I haven't also won anything. So that's definitely been the biggest challenge is trying to just get that going. Um, all right, guys. Apologize. My battery died. But we're back at it. So, next question: That chef Jojo, why did the chef with butane tasting dish get kicked off instead of chef that's supposed to be in charge of Comina? He's supposed to be tasting every dish before it goes out. This is a super, super hard question to answer. Um, I personally don't know how to answer that. Um, it's because this is the judge's standpoint, right? Um, at the end of the day, Restaurant Wars, that's, it happens to all the different seasons that you've watched, that if you've watched Top Chef before, whether it's Canada or US, is that do you blame the chef that's in charge or do you actually blame the, the chef that made the dish, right? Um, or which one's not to blame, but who's the one supposed to go for that? It's, that's why it's a very stressful challenge. Um, Restaurant Wars is, is insane. But to answer that, I really don't know. Um, you might have to ask ask the judges that. Um, I know for sure they they took a long time discussing and figuring out what was it. It was it's a tough one. So sorry, Jojo. That's all I can answer for that one. Um, and then that's it. Yep. So those are all the questions. Um, thanks guys for watching once again. Thanks for all the support. You know, if you're gonna post something about uh, the show or if you wanna support me, check out my site at uh, sixpackchef.com. Also use hashtag Team Wallace, hashtag Team Sixpack Chef. Follow me on, you know, Instagram, w 2 Sixpack Chef, Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube, all the social media channels. Follow your boy. Uh, thanks guys for watching. This is episode three. Episode four of Top Chef Canada comes out Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern. Food Network Canada, check it out. You can also watch past episodes on foodnetwork.ca under Top Chef Canada. And fingers crossed, hopefully I I don't get eliminated. That's the big thing. That's like more important than winning. Um, winning an elimination challenge or quick fire is not get eliminated. Uh, next one is 